hell all he wants. It's been some time. But I figured we'd end the year off the right way. We need to come together. <laughs> we need to come together. Clearly we do. But here's the interesting thing. Coming together is an illusion. Because we are interconnected. We cannot be separated. But let's look at how we've created the illusion of separation. With the most obvious one. Man, woman. I was reading an article with China. Parents are having a very hard time finding a bride for their sons. <laughs> oh, China. But they did that to themselves. Because they thought that girls and women were somehow less valuable than males. The illusion of, oh, the man carries on the name. The man makes more money. Girls are weak. It costs too much money. You got to get a dowry. Let's just have boys instead. They'll take care of the family. So what did they do with all those girls? Hmm. Well, they're not in China, clearly. <laughs> so where are they? You see that illusion of separation? between man and woman. It's an illusion. A persistent one, but it's an illusion. We need each other. We are interconnected. A man can sow as many seeds as he wants. It only matters that he sows them in a receptive womb. Women carry wombs. But without a receptive womb, you can sow as many seeds as you want. Nothing will grow. So you see, man is nothing without woman. Woman is nothing without man. Just on that level of reproduction alone. That's just, just the scratch of the surface. It's not the only one, but it's just there, you know? But yet, we somehow believe. And it runs through the very fabric of our society. That men are more valuable than women. I've always said... The way for you to disconnect yourself from another person, you have to disconnect yourself from the source. You have to blind yourself to it because when you, if you're connected to the source, what is the source? The one commonality that we all come from. That's the source. If you disconnect yourself from that, then you will always see disconnect everywhere. But if you are connected to the source, when you look at your neighbor, if you're a man and you're looking at your neighbor and she's a woman, you would never think or believe that she's less than you. Thus, she should be paid more. She's a baby-making machine. She doesn't have an opinion. She's not smart. If you are connected to the source, you would never think that. If you were a woman and you looked at a man, ugh, he's good for taking out the garbage and mowing the lawn, shoveling the snow, building things. You wouldn't think of a man like that. When we are connected to source, when you look into the eyes of someone else, you will see their connection to you. You will see 
But if you hurt them, you hurt yourself. You will see that how you treat them is a reflection of who you are. So what is the solution for the gender pay gap? What is the solution for China's problem of not enough women? <laughs> Learn to love men, China. <laughs> That's what you're going to have to do because you created that. You can correct it over generations, but there's no immediate fix to it. We are interconnected. What I do to you, I do to myself. What I do to me, I do to you. And the reason why we don't believe that is because we don't see the immediate effect of it. That's why. This is why women are penalized for walking down the street wearing what they want to wear, wearing what they feel good wearing, but they're penalized if a man accosts them. Like the judge, he said to the woman, perhaps you should have kept your legs closed. He said that to a woman. Clearly, he's disconnected from source. But then again, perhaps if his mother had kept her legs closed, he wouldn't have had an idiot. But I digress. So you see, we cannot go through this existence any longer thinking that men and women are separate. Because we are not. We are interconnected. And what we technically should have is a symbiotic relationship. My son loves that word symbiotic because he likes venom. <laughs> but he understands the difference between a symbiote. A symbiote needs a host. But the symbiote works together with the host because the symbiote knows if the host is to survive. And if the symbiote is to survive, they have to rely on each other. Now, insert a parasite. A parasite will suck the life from you and find another host. That's what we've become right now. We've become parasitic. We've become parasitic to our planet. We've become parasitic to each other. So how do we get back to symbiotic relationships? A balance. We get back to that by reconnecting to source. If you doubt that we are connected, let it not rain. <laughs> it doesn't just not rain on these few people. It doesn't rain on anyone. Let the sun go out. All perish. We are interconnected by a common source. We all come from one singular source. Yin and Yang. We have that, that little black and white symbol you see there all the time. One flows into the other. But that's for another time. Practice. Looking into the eyes of your neighbor. My son understands something very, very important. He understands the importance of skin color. He understands that the darker you are, the better you're able to handle the sun. That's what he knows. So he says, if you're lighter, you can't handle the sun. That is how 
he sees skin color. Because truthfully, that is the only purpose that skin color has. Where did you come from in the world? Did it have more sun or less? But for some reason, again, we've disconnected ourselves from the source. So we think that because one person looks a particular way physically, the skin they're in, they're deemed lesser than or more violent or more this or more that. No, my dear darling, there's one race and it is humans people people you just look a certain way because of demographic where'd you come from ancestrally that's why we look different that is the only reason why we look different But in the 14th century, Spain, when they were going to the Crusades to convert non-Christians to Christianity, they wanted to uh, decipher who was Christian and who was not. And you couldn't tell by looking at the other person who was Christian and who wasn't. So they separated you by color. Mm. Isn't that lovely? And it's stuck with us ever since, hey? So, how do we get here, people? Compassion. How do you reconnect yourself to the source? Mm. It's quite easy, actually. I go stargazing at night. When I get up and I go to my job, I, that's how early I get up that the stars are out. And so I've been watching the stars go across this, the night sky since August. I've been watching it happen. If you do that, you have to understand, all people look up at one point and see that sky. That sky connects us. That's where you start, with the visible, simple things. The sun connects us, the moon connects us, the stars, because we're all looking at them. You see? So if you want to reconnect, know that the sun shines on everybody. It rains on everybody. Everybody has to eat. Everybody has to breathe. We are one. And I dislike so much hearing, oh, what race are you? No, sweetie, you mean what culture am I? That's what you mean, culture, not race, because there's only one race. We need to stop being so divisive. We are one. And the sooner we remember that and appreciate it it is the hmm, it is our differences that strengthen us you know because we learn from each other each culture has something beautiful and unique to offer yes and they're only there to bring out the best in each other So why would you silence one of them? I.e. women. <laughs> An entire planet. Doesn't matter where you go in the world. There's a woman somewhere not being respected or listened to simply because she's a woman. And we're starting to see all these movements, me too, time's up. It is simply balance. There's been too much taking. And now women are giving. If you want to look at it that way. However you want to look at it. There's been too much masculine. And so the feminine has no choice but to rise, 
to create balance. The entire universe is built on balance. If one is out of balance, it has to come back to balance. And however it can, it will. So, we have to bring the individual self back into balance. Recognize that we all breathe, we all eat, we all drink, we all get cold, we all bleed. We all are born and we all die. That is our literal commonality, our literal connectivity. That's where we start. And we all want the exact same thing. Yes, we want to be loved, appreciated, and understood. So will you start? It's not a New Year's resolution. It's the way life should be. No time like the present to start. Much love.